If you look back through my video history, you'll see that every few years I do like to revisit my Captain Majid and Turtle home computer 3600 to 5 million Rinko family clone. And one of my disappointments is with it is that the video quality is actually quite bad. And seeing as we've spent more time recently working on the Famicom Vamps, you can look at my store for those, I thought let's have a look what clones do for that board. And just to let you know then, in the original Nintendo Famicoms, the power supply and video board is a separate RF board. I'm not sure why they did that, it's probably to do with different regions, it's easier to change that part out. And that often has issues nowadays with modern TVs, so you know it's like to be replaced them, and that's why there's the power bank board on the, the site. So clones generally <laughs> are even cheaper made than the originals, yeah, significantly cheaper made. <laughs> So they have even worse video and power supply problems, but then, of course, to save money, they put a lot of that on the main board as well, so it's like a double whammy of horribleness. But if I recall when we looked at this a long time ago, it may well have had a separate power supply and video board, and if it has that, again, it might be possible to actually replace that with one of our vamps. And if that's the case, then Grovy, because this is actually a really nice clone. It came with a whole bunch of built-in games. I can't remember if that cartridge is still in there. I might have yoinked it, actually. And I'll show you how that worked. You see, it has actually an internal cartridge right there. And you can see <laughs> previous work on here to try to get this to do something. Um, obviously, we were had issues with sound. <laughs> And obviously we had issues with power. So some people don't realize, of course, that we've played with these things in the past and that's why some of our projects have been created. <laughs> so, mm. looking here, we do have five pins in this location. And if we look at a power vamp board, and this is one of the mm, new prototype V4s, you can see we actually do have a header that matches up there and it contains video, ground, audio, three 5 volt lines and a ground. So if you add those pins up, it's actually one, two, three, four, five pins. And if we count them here, one, two, three, four, five. So there is a good chance that we can actually map these to this board and potentially fit it. Well, let's have a quick look. Let's just gingerly separate this out. Now I don't totally want to destroy it because it does work <laughs> in various capacities now and you can see this is actually an audio amplifier <laughs> as well as, as, as um, power and they're really cruddy. If you, so if you look at an original Famicom there's way more parts than you get on this thing. And let's have a look here. Oh, look at that. It is like the plastics actually do match up. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm getting too excited, getting too ahead of myself. First things to do, of course, is just to desolder this board out. And I'm, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm just gonna rotate this around nicely. Let's make sure we have plenty of room. I tell you what, I haven't been as excited about uh, something for a long time, and this is very exciting. The possibility of getting this working definitely is cool. Let's just, I'm just gonna touch these up gently, just to get them some heat, make sure they are starting to soften, because this is a very old device now. I mean, I remember getting this way back, and it would have been in the 90s, but you know, the 90s were quite a while now. So we do forget these old electronics can be a bit crusty. There, we've got that off. That is actually pretty good, Nick. Oh, <laughs> look what they've done for us. They're actually labelled. Okay, I had a little sit down to calm down because it was just getting way too exciting there. So that being said, it is time to revisit this. I did notice one thing though that is a bit interesting and that's the power switch. Um, 
we have here on the vamp the option for the power switch but of course here the power switch is integrated now that's not normally an issue because the later revisions actually of the uh, Nintendo Famicom do that we just put a jumper over here because the circuit for the power is actually closed elsewhere there is a, a slight thing in that the um, regulator on board here will be on but drawing just a quiescent current when this is off so I don't foresee it to be an issue so we'll just hook it up as is so let's just go like that we'll flip this round so that will be the pinouts so we can see we've got ground VCC well hang on a minute <laughs> we have to be careful here ground is that ground audio VCC I think ground VCC audio ground video that's how I do it let's see how that matches to us Gr video ground audio 5 volts ground so yeah not quite the same pinout so what I'll do is I'm gonna split these to give us a chance to wire them and actually before I do that I'll screw down this board which is really conveniently actually they've copied the mounts <laughs> totally so if I just pop some screws in those those mount holes we can see it more or less lines up where you'd get on a, a regular family pump so that's excellent so I'll just do that just use the old scissors <laughs> being very careful here don't want to add an additional wiring job <laughs> if I can avoid it yes. look at that look at that nicely snipped we can just bend those out of the way and I've got these slightly they're not quite self tappers but they're not quite machine screws so hopefully they'll get enough bite and indeed they are see that's the benefit of saving all these screws from all these pc case installs <laughs> they always give you bags of these various screws and you can see they do a lovely job um yeah there's <laughs> this slight misalignment but i think it's more to do with the plastic so i'm just going to put the screw in and bend the plastic slightly. I didn't appreciate that my PCB would be part a structural member now of this family fan. <laughs> but it is, that's fine. Again, you can't expect the plastics to be a hundred percent, especially if they were never intended to be used, because I'm looking at the board that we removed, and that's missing most of these holes. So they clearly just did a case copy and then decided they didn't need all the holes. They're going to save themselves a few cents per unit by not supplying these screws. And away they went. It's fine. Right, so now that is rock solid. Again, it might be worth just looking at this just to make sure we've got this first pin, first, second, third, fourth, third first and fourth pin are ground so let's see if that makes sense ground and ground yes yeah. so I think we have to go ground VCC audio ground video we'll just do it that way we'll just take a punt on that so the first pin is video which is this one so I'm just going to wrap it around and I'm not going to solder it as you would normally with a through hole just through the actual PCB I'm just going to pop it in from the top like so don't worry I'll zoom in you'll have to see and I'm just going to bend it over you can see what I'm up to and you can, I'm basically just popping it in from the top like that and then I'm just going to go in with my soldering iron and need a new another set of hands for this but you can see I'm all prepared up I've got me a soldering iron here and I'm just gonna put a little dab there and that's going to hold that perfectly in place and while we're at it this power switch remember we're not going to use that necessarily so I'm going to make a jumper and I'm just going to make that out of a little bit of wire okay, be a little bit careful when you're bending the wire I have stabbed myself on many an occasion and if you get the wire just to go through those two pins nicely Just prizing them together a little bit more. They weren't quite aligned up. Just like so. Yoink. And just give it a little kiss with the soldering iron. 
And that's easy actually to remove if you have to. So what was the next one? That was our video. And the next one is ground. And we have loads of grounds and they're all connected on here. So we can choose this pin here. This well, the first one on the actual board was ground. So let's pop that one there. And we do have another ground further on, which will be a little bit more convenient. And I'm just going to tin this because it doesn't look particularly nicely tinned. And I'm just going to tin the pad. I'm not even going to poke this one through the hole. It looks so mauled up. I think it would prefer just to sit there on the surface next to it. Like so. Brilliant. And the next pin we need to add is audio. So this actual one is VCC. So we're going to keep VCC out of the way while we work on the audio pin, which was the next one. And you know what? That technique was so good. <laughs> I'm just going to do the same thing. That was really convenient. If you've got tweezers, I think it's definitely the way to go. So this is the audio. I'm going to just fold that down there. Make sure it's straight. Just a bit ginger. Now nearly any time anybody has an issue with the VAP, it's always down to soldering. Always. They're very simple boards. You can't really mess it up, but you can mess up soldering. So the next one beyond that, this one is another ground, which we can just attach straight to pin 7. Like that. Oh, just, just throw the tools about, why don't you? Ugh. <laughs> These flexible cables are not particularly flexible. Not like modern day ribbons. Perfect. I mean, that's not pretty, but it'll do. It's not shorting of anything and it's a ground. And now we have the second wire here, which was the VCC. And we've got three power pins here. So I'm just going to choose one right in the middle. Bang, right in the middle. That give us plenty of room either side. And here's the power. And we'll just pop that in there. Whew! So, scarily enough, that looks like we're almost ready to test this out. For the next stage, we need a few things. We have a game cartridge, always useful. And we do have the cable set that comes with the vamp, which is the gold Goo are gold plated <laughs> connectors. Pop that in like that. It's good. And we have, of course, a TV. And that TV has got composite. And we think it's on. Is it warming up? Program, volume. Yeah, while that's sitting there, I do have also a bench power supply, which is set to 5 volts. Currently turned off. I'll pop that in there too. Now. Before we even bother with the telly side, I'm just going to look here because we actually do have an LED on the new V4. And it's an RGB LED, of course, because there's new clear case uh, Famicom uh, shells coming out. And of course, we want to see when we're on. So I'm just going to power that on now. And I can see that LED is illuminating and rotating. It is an RGB LED, so that's good. Um, Interestingly enough, this power switch seems a bit balked, so I think we're permanently on right now. But you can see here that LED is illuminating through the shell quite nicely, and it's just colour cycling. So we do have power on this. Um, yeah, the power switch, though, that's something I will have to sort out at some point. don't know what happened to that. So let's knock that off. I'm going to pop the cartridge in. So now that is actually set up, even though it's not got the bottom shell. And then I'm just going to turn our telly on. It turns out that my little television no longer works as a monitor since the time I dropped it. However, I do have a rather big panel here. I have set this up. I have tested it. You can see it's open because the power switch was balked. So I had to put a jumper here. Again, I have to repair that, but let's not deal with Famicom issues. Let's just see how our vamp does. So power on. Boom! Hide light. Look at that. 
gorgeous, gorgeous picture. I don't think I've ever seen such a stable image from this Famiclone. If you look at my previous videos on it, it was absolutely shocking before, but now it's fine. Let's turn off the sound. Ah, so yeah, it does work. You can hear there's sound and you can see there's picture. Now, unfortunately with this particular family clone, and you could see a couple of videos back, I did uh, make this modification to boost its audio. It does have an audio issue because when I put this TV up to full, I can hear the Hydelide music, but it's still very quiet. Perhaps that's a video for the future where I'm going to go in onto this mainboard. Just maybe change some caps on there and just see what's on there. I never really investigated what could be wrong. But I'm absolutely over the moon because this Famicom, um, or Famiclone rather, is working fine. And you can see our gorgeous V4 RGB mod is firing up there, nice and bright. So yeah! That basically is that. If you do want to repair your Rinko family clone or any other family clone that looks like it has the same pinouts, just crack the lid on it, have a quick look, see what piece of rubbish <laughs> board is in there, and you can just yoink that, just bin that, let's not even worry about that anymore, and get yourself a rock solid stable solution in here that will work not only on your family clones, but of course on your actual Famicoms because it's made to be 100% compatible with all of the existing Nintendo Famicom systems and it will provide you with a rock solid output, cold as ice, lovely now LED on here for that RGB lighting for that clear shell and look at that picture. Oh, oh, it's gorgeous. I could give it a kiss and I'm telling you, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to zoom in. No jail bars, nothing, not even a hint of one and that's what you want. Bloody hell, that's probably the best Famiclone in the world today, TM. Thanks for watching. I figured before I'd put the camera away, I'd try to show you a better image. Um, obviously, I'm holding the camera by hand, and you can see the hide light demo screen is moving around, but I'm just going to zoom in. I'm doing manual camera zoom, excuse the dirt on the TV, but you can see in these black areas, very clear. I mean, if you really squint, oh, I don't know, you can maybe see the hint of a jail, but oh, it's, I tell you what, it's just, it's like nothing. When you're at normal distance, that picture is absolutely rock solid. I always wondered about this guy. Look at his hand. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Please uh, go to backofficeshow.com and check out the store for what vamps are available there and get on it. Get your Famicom working.